All right, it's September 24th, it's Friday. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Dr. Jay Kim, facial plastic surgeon. We're coming to you from my office waiting room in Fairfax, Virginia, just a half hour outside of Washington, D.C. So a couple of announcements before we begin. Uh, we're gonna have a Q&A session. We've had, we have some questions from uh, you, the in, uh, Instagram or Facebook follower, as well as some of our existing patients and so we're going before we get to the questions we'll start off with a little um, announcement so it's September and it's time for fall well fall has already begun so we're going to have some promotions uh, for fall in terms of injectables and skin care so Botox fillers skin care products um, skin care services we're going to have a little promotion so sign up um, by email if you haven't already now if you are an email subscriber make sure to check your email we usually send out our e-blast every Wednesday um, so check out so watch out for those um, we have a already full fall into beauty event this coming Wednesday uh, thank you if you signed up um, if you did if you weren't able to um, we will have a party towards the end of the year uh, where you can come and meet me and the staff and have some uh, nice refreshments and get some nice promotions there as well. Uh, we will have an end of the year promotion uh, for our existing patients as well as for our new patients. Um, but yeah, this um, 2021 has been quite crazy uh, in a lot of good ways. So I'm really happy. Um, now the practice has been going on almost two years and uh, we're slowly growing, you know, just slow and steady. Um, you know, we're, we're very excited for a lot of our patients who have trusted us, trusted me with their beauty, and um, are doing quite well. Um, thank you for that. Um, and with that, um, oh, I do have one more announcement. Um, we will soon be looking for a part-time help um, to help with lasers, peels, um, some other non-surgical services to help our patients beauty um, just look for the listing on indeed in the coming weeks and if you're interested or if you know someone who's interested um, please reach out our email is info at jaekimmd.com would love to have your help uh, would love for you to be a, a part of our awesome team okay so let's go with the first question um, what do you think is the easiest surgery to perform? Um, it's kind of a loaded question, I guess. Um, there's a lot of surgeries you can perform for the face and neck, um, but I don't take any one of them lightly. So in that sense, none of the surgeries that I do, I take lightly as in, oh, this is gonna be a breeze. You know what I mean? Um, but I do think that, you know, on some level, there are certain types of surgeries where the anatomy is pretty consistent across most people um, and most age groups. Um, but I would say that in terms of the duration of surgery, maybe something that's a little shorter, um, and in terms of complexity, you know, something that's a little more simple perhaps, um, just in terms of you know, the risk factors, and also um, just the overall uh, patient satisfaction with outcomes, that's a really tough one. Um, and I would say upper eyelid surgery, but I would say Asian upper eyelid surgery is much harder than non-Asian upper eyelid surgery. So the difference between Asian eyelids and non-Asian eyelids is that for Asian people, you have to make a crease or fortify it, which requires a little bit more deeper, more detailed work than for non-Asian eyelid, upper eyelid surgery. So in non-Asian upper eyelid surgery, the basic um, approach is to remove extra skin. That's usually what people are concerned about, extra skin coming over your eyelids, as well as there could be some fat coming forward and or some extra muscle that provides an extra thickness to the upper eyelid area that you don't need or don't like. So in that sense, you know, every non-Asian upper eyelid surgery is catered to each individual's anatomy and goals. 
Having said that, it is one of the shorter procedures that I perform. It can be done in under an hour, and it's done in the convenience of our office. So what we do is we give you some medication to keep you nice and relaxed. Um, we put in some numbing shots across the area that we're going to do the operation. Um, I you know, make the necessary moves and sew it up with a fine stitch that I remove a week later. So in that sense, non-Asian upper eyelid surgery, I would say, is the easiest to perform. But again, I emphasize that it's not easy as in, oh, it's a breeze. Just it's a little more, you know, the steps are more clear in terms of what the surgeon has to do. Okay, next question. What is your favorite surgery to perform? So the reason I went into facial plastic surgery is because the face is really how we express ourselves to the world and how we portray ourselves to the world. So in terms of facial surgery, I really, you know, there's not one I, that I don't like. However, I would say that the favorite surgery to perform is upper eyelid surgery whether it's Asian or non-Asian. Um, but I think that in terms of what you're able to do, the small area that you're able to work on, you know, and it makes such a difference in how people um, appear. So, you know, an hour to an hour and a half in the office and you come out looking brighter, you know, your eyes are more lively, more vibrant, and that's, I think, the most satisfying for me. Uh, what is the most popular surgery I do in this practice? The most popular surgery so far has been upper eyelid surgery. I have a lot of Asian patients who, you know, they trust me because I've learned specifically about Asian eyelid surgery and I happen to be Asian American. So I kind of understand their approach, their goals, what kind of what they're looking for. And a lot of Asian people have trusted me with their surgery, which I'm very thankful for. Um, but yeah, upper eyelid surgery, um, that's, that's kind of where it is right now, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, what do you not like about your profession? So this is a very interesting question. It's kind of tough because there are so many aspects of the job that I like. However, I will say that one of the parts that makes me sad or you know, even upset is when um, surgical outcomes or just treatment outcomes don't pan out the way that we would like. Okay, when you operate enough or when you do Botox enough, whatever procedure you do enough of, there's going to be some people every now and then whose outcome isn't what the patient would like or and or what you would like. Okay, and as much as people like me try our hardest and do our very best, we're human. So unfortunately, there are people every now and then who don't have outcomes that they like. Um, I will say that you know, for every person who does enough procedures, this happens. So yes, it's happened to me, it's happened to my patients. And when we meet up with them, follow up with them to discuss their concerns and their less than optimal outcomes, you know, I like to be very straightforward with them. I, you know, fess up to the idea that yes, you know, your outcome isn't what we would have liked. However, this is, you know, these are some of the good aspects about what happened and or, you know, if we like after a certain amount of time, you know, there's a way that we can help change it so that you can get closer to your desired outcome. Um, this is a very um, important part of what I do and, you know, a great part of my residency and fellowship was not just about learning how to do surgery and doing it well. It's a, also a very important component of our training is being able to talk to patients about their expectations before and the issues that may happen during the recovery process. So unfortunately it happens, but um, you know, I'm, I'm always of the mindset that I stand by my patients through every step of the way, no matter what concerns they have, no matter how small or how big, and you know, we do, I do my best to get you to that desired outcome. What do you like about your job? Well, if I didn't have great team, I wouldn't like my job. So I do like my team. They're all smiling in the background. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, the people you work with, they're kind of like your, you know, they're your work family. Um, so you have to really enjoy working with them. 
and they have to buy into what you do. We have to buy into our team approach, um, play to our strengths. Um, and my team is very strong, and I'm very proud of them. Um, love what they do, and the smiles that they bring to the patients who walk in through the door. So that's one of the things I love the most about my job. What is Q-Switch, and can you show me what it looks like? Okay, so one of our existing patients asked about one of our laser pieces. So Q-Switch is a laser that, here, let me get the same piece. Okay. So Q-Switch is a laser that targets pigmented skin. Okay, so um, this is most popularly known for tattoo removal. So when the pigment on your skin is vastly different from the rest of your base pigment, um, it, the, uh, the laser energy is drawn to that and the heat gets absorbed by the skin that has that different color. So this is good for tattoo removal, it's good for brown spots, I do some of my own and I do some for the staff too. Um, so it's a great tool, uh, nice handpiece. Again, this is not a one and done deal because you know the process of pigment formation in your skin is always a constant process. So especially after summertime when you've had more sun exposure, at least in the northern hemisphere, um, it's a good time for brown spots to kind of come to the surface again. So what you do is as the days get shorter, kind of like now into the winter time, uh, it's a good time to get treated with this. Okay, um, next. Oh, that little bit backwards. We have some personal questions from the audience. Oh, okay. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is your favorite food? My favorite food, I mean, my roots are Korean, so I like Korean food. Um, I think one of my favorites is kimchi stew. So kimchi is um, fermented cabbage. It's fermented with salt and other Korean spices. Uh, if you boil that in some water and add some tofu, some pork, um, some other vegetables, you get a nice stew. Um, it's one of my and my wife's favorite dishes, so that's what we like. Oh, we actually got a question from the audience as well. Uh, do you also do revision upper eyelid surgery? Revision upper eyelid surgery is something that I do, yes. So you may want revision eyelid surgery for a couple reasons. Okay, you may want it because one side does not look the same as the other. That is a quite common, uh, quite common concern that some of my patients come in with. Um, some people, um, you know, come in with, oh, I had eyelid surgery 20, 30 years ago, but the skin's coming over again. So in that case, you know, a lot of the time it's just, hey, let's remove some more skin. Um, the other thing that you have to know is that if there's not an issue of our eyelid skin, but your brows are getting lower, then we do have to talk about possibly raising the eyebrows to make the eyes more open. But yes, the simple answer is I do revision uh, eyelid surgery for non-Asian and for Asians. Okay. Uh, someone asked, how long have you played the violin? I see your videos all the time on Instagram. <laughs> so I've played violin since I was full, almost four years old. So I've been playing for more than 30 years. Um, the, my parents told me that they just walked me into a musical instrument shop and that's the one that I picked. Um, so I've, my violin playing has actually opened a lot of opportunities for me. Um, I've traveled to Africa, to Asia, to Europe with my violin to perform. So um, it's about the places you go, it's about the people you play with, um, you know, and I'm so thankful to my teachers, um, one of my teachers in Houston and one of my teachers in New York really were the foundation of um, who I, uh, how I develop as a violinist. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can go on and on about um, the many people I played with and uh, the many you know, pieces I played and experiences I had. Um, but just for reference, I am kind of good. <laughs> so some other people I played with uh, concert ties throughout the world. Some of them played the New York Philharmonic. Um, but so I like to think that I have some chops, and the discipline that was required to get those chops, and the artistry that I developed as a result of all the playing, 
I think, contributed to my expertise in facial plastic surgery. So both of them require endless hours of refining your technique, and both of them require your own flavor in terms of the artistry of it. So um, that's how violin influences me as a facial plastic surgeon. Okay, another question is for a user here. Where's Nala? <laughs> <laughs> I know, you didn't tune in to see me, you just tuned in to see our mascot, Nala. She is at daycare today. Um, you know, every now and then we like to give her a chance to play with other dogs, um, you know, grow socially in that way. So we really appreciate that opportunity that we are able to give her. Um, yeah, she goes a, a couple times a week, I would say. Um, she's a year old now. Um, she's, you know, one of the best things that happened to me and my wife um, so far. The um, playfulness, you know, the intelligence, just the affection that she brings. Um, my staff and I, you know, love having her here. Unfortunately, she's not here today, but hopefully she'll be here at the next live. Um, but yeah, thank you for asking about her. She's doing well. <laughs> okay, Dr. Kim, it seems that there's no more questions. Would you like, to, do you have any ending comments? Um, so, we're excited about the end of the year. Um, you know, this is, um, this is my brainchild, this is my baby, so um, I appreciate your coming and tuning in, um, you know, as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, um, as a viewer, as a patient, um, thank you very much. Um, look forward to continuing to provide great services for you um, with a smile on our face. Um, so, you know, come by, um, call, text, or email, and we are very quick to respond to you. So we look forward to the next live, which should be in about three, four weeks' time. Um, if you would, guys would like me to think, uh, talk about anything in particular, um, please text our office and let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next live. <laughs>